The Nigerian border closure has spanned for over two months now. The development has triggered rounds of official engagements between the governments of Ghana and Nigeria to get it resolved. The issue keeps biting businesses and other allied services by the day. At the DVIP station at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, drivers and their mates were idling as they waited for passengers to come on board. As at 3 p.m., the first seven-passenger car for the day was yet to be full. Head of operations here, David Olushegun, says business has been slow. He says they now load only a car instead of two a day. The closure of the border has affected us drastically since uh, August. And we have been finding it very difficult to comply with our customer. I mean, those who normally bring goods to us because of the closure of the border, their number have reduced drastically. It is only little that have the mind that, okay, let me just try my luck. It is under maybe the goods might enter, some might not enter. It's just try your luck. So the closure of the border has affected us, even the year what you can bear for now. You can all see the old terminal is very dry, and it was not like that before. Normally we, sub we normally load twice a day, morning, night. But now, very even this is the first bus now. We are loading it for night, and it's supposed to go this morning. But because there is no passenger, so we are pushing it to the night, which was not like that before. Michael Obiagwa trades in apartment syrup, and he has very slim hope of transporting some of his products to Nigeria. He says he has to transport fewer goods as a result of the directive, which is worrying his business. Before, before I take more than 100 cattle, but now we are taking it 5 cattle, 10 cattle, 20 cattle, it's not much like that. And the money that we used to take it now is higher than before because of closing of the border. No, for here we are paying much money here to carry it. Yeah, from now i have taken more than uh, 40, for something cattle now. And now. Yeah, you know, like uh, three months ago, I take uh, more than 100, 200 cartons in a month. Unfortunately for Lushegun, a customer is demanding his goods, which has been seized at the border for a couple of days now. Some, uh, some have come here to try to beat police. We have to beg them that, you know, it's not our fault. It is the closure of the border. And some reason with us, they also, they reason with us by asking what is the way out. Even as I'm talking to you now, I'm supposed to travel to, to Lagos, to Seme, to go and find out how I can bail out some of the goods. Because the owner, they came here yesterday, they will see come in on Friday. They'll be here on Friday. I beg them that you give me like three, four days so that I can see the way out. If it is what I can solve, I will call them that see, 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 see. But if it is not what I can solve, they have to come back for negotiation that, okay, Let's now do how much do you buy your goods so that we know what to reform back. All this, they were not like this before. It is all because of the closure of the border. At the ABC Travels, which is located at Caprice in Accra, we were met with virtually an empty bus terminal with frustrated passengers. Also, there were packs of goods yet to be transported to Nigeria. An agent at a transport station who wants to stay anonymous says their business has been greatly affected. Anytime you came to ABC Terminal, uh, you, you saw a lot of people here buying tickets. People who have come to Ghana to, to buy and to go and sell back home in Nigeria or in Togo or in Benin. Um, but because of this closure, especially for those going to Nigeria, um, they are unable to come here in their numbers. In that, um, the the load that they buy, the item, the stuff that they buy from Ghana to, to Nigeria is being, is being is deemed as contraband by the Nigerian government for now. These goods belong to this woman and she has been unable to take them to Nigeria. This has visibly made her unhappy. The agent also confirmed the low levels of passenger turnout at the station. What we do is that 
we, for now, from, from August till date, we are gravitating towards or moving towards the, the Christmas festive season. And as such, we're expecting more turnout, more high turnout or an, an upsurge in the passenger levels. But because of this decision by government, or by this Nigerian government, we think that our, our, our turnout has not been so encouraging. Before, we were moving about, uh, about two, two buses in a day. Um, one long 52-seater bus and uh, possibly two other sprinters. Uh, but now we, we, can, we can hardly move um, as, as a sprinter. Um, the, the, the maximum you could get on a 52-seater bus will be about 15 passengers for, for a 52-seater bus, which is not too good for business. Because you're looking at your road expenses, you're looking at your driver, driver allowance, you're looking at... Um, you're looking at other expenses that you incur, fueling everything on the road is not too, too, too good for us. We, we think that we are, we, are, we are hard hit by this, this, this um, decision by the government. Although transport operators have been badly hit by this new directive, they're entreating all and sundry, especially passengers who want to travel from Ghana into Nigeria, to do so freely without any hinders. Reporting for City News, my name is Kweku Adiyama Ansa.